are listening to Living with ADHD and CPTSD. Available on Apple, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcast. Welcome to an episode of Living with ADHD and CPTSD. Today we will talk about ADHD. I want to talk about a couple symptoms that are ones that I tend to have uh, occur on a great deal. And I want to get more specific and detailed about it because I really haven't done that yet. And the one, actually, sorry, the two that I really want to talk about is um, being impulsive and the inability to focus or concentrate. Now, these two are my real, I guess if you want to call it my, um, my adversaries, because they they really can and they often do make life difficult and even though i am taking the medication and which is vivance and i am at 50 milligrams a day there are still times where depending on the time of day and depending on the situation and the condition that i'm in like if i've had a good night's sleep or not if i'm feeling well or not they can still be a detriment to my ability to behave and have a productive and efficient day. Now, impulsiveness, as you're aware of, is talking or acting and speaking without having the ability to think before you do. So that sometimes is like talking at a turn, saying something that doesn't make sense, saying something to somebody that is potentially mean or harmful, um, something that doesn't, that is not intelligent and not being able to control the, like that need to say it. And the problem is that A lot of people, when they are talking, their ability, like their need, it's important that they have the impulse control because if you don't, then you have a, you have a real tendency that you could get yourself into situations that are really sticky and really difficult to get out of, Um, unless that person who you're talking to knows who you are and is very aware of your inability to control that impulse, you're really likely to get into some kind of trouble, whether it's uh, reprimanding, whether it's being yelled at or having someone angry at you, um, possibly losing your job. Um, there's There's a number of things that can happen and it's, it is something that a lot of us with ADHD tend to struggle with. And the one thing that you I want you to understand is that medication does not necessarily prevent you from being impulsive. Because medication is meant to strengthen and improve focus and concentration, not necessarily for impulse control. So... I'm going to read something real quick here regarding impulsivity, and then I will discuss some more about my own impulsiveness. All right, so what is impulsivity? I kind of have gone on a little bit about it, but this will give you a a more more specific and broader as well description of it. All right, so impulsivity is the tendency to act without thinking. For example, if you blurt out, blurt something out, buy something you have not planned to, or run across the street without looking. 
To a degree, this kind of behavior is common, especially in children or teenagers, and isn't necessarily a sign of trouble. It's typical for them to act impulsively because their brains are still developing. But in some cases, it can be a part of certain conditions. When impulsivity goes too far, it's human nature to sometimes say or do something you wish you hadn't. But some people are impulsive often, maybe several times a day. Acting that way can lead to problems and regret. If you notice a regular pattern of the following, it might be an issue. Aggressive behavior, restlessness, interrupting others, and being easily distracted. Conditions linked to impulsivity. Now, there are other ones, obviously, besides ADHD, so I'll read them all. All right. Impulsive behavior can be a symptom of several conditions. It can also be seen in patients with anxiety and autism spectrum disorders, as well as substance abuse. Some of the most common ones include attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Examples of impulsivity here include interrupting others who are talking, shouting out answers to questions, or having trouble waiting your turn when standing in line. Then there's bipolar disorder. This brain disorder affects your mood, energy level, and the ability to do day-to-day -day activities. Impulsiveness can show up in behaviors like extreme spending habits or substance abuse. Antisocial personality disorders. With these disorders, you pay little or no attention to right and wrong and tend to treat people badly without thinking about the consequences. Impulsive behavior linked to them can include substance, substance abuse and other harmful actions and having a hard time with personal relationships. Impulse control disorders. These disorders are less common. People who have them act on urges to do things that harm them or others, or that aren't acceptable socially or are against the law. They can take many different forms, such as intermittent explosive disorder. This is the tendency to lose your temper often, usually in short outbursts. Even the smallest of issues can trigger it. Trichotillomania. Trichotillomania. I apologize if I didn't say that right. Also known as hair pulling disorder, this is when you can't stop pulling at your hair on top of your head, eyebrows, eyelids, or anywhere else on your body. Kleptomania. This is when you can't resist the urge to steal and feel a sense of relief when you do it, though you might not even keep what you steal. Pyromania. This is the urge to set fires or being obsessed about setting fires. It is rare. Only about 3% of psychiatric inpatients are diagnosed with pyromania. Pathological gambling. While many people make a small handshake wager here and there, or play the occasional office pool, people who have this disorder can get caught up in it to the point that it affects their work or relationships and the stress takes a toll on their health. Treatment. If impulsivity is a part of a condition, the treatment depends on the cause. One general approach is applied behavioral analysis, where you learn to work through or better, hand, or better handle situations that tend to trigger or your impulsive behavior. Your doctor might also recommend medications, antidepressants like selective serotonin re reuptake inhibitors or SSRIs, which is depression medication, can help with impulse control disorders. If the behavior is part of ADHD, medications prescribed for that condition might help. Those include amphetamines, dextroamphetamines, Adderall, or methylphenidate, Concerta, Daytrana, Methylin, Ritalin. Sometimes non-stimulant medications like clonidine and gu guanfacine can help with impulse control too. Be ready for situations that can bring on impulsivity also helps. For example, you might carry a notebook either to doodle in or to distract yourself or to write something down before saying it out loud. The idea here is to pause before you act impulsively so you have a chance to think through whether what you're about to do is a good idea and what the consequences might be. Okay. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea and it might, I, I think that could be definitely helpful. Okay, here's something else, uh, another article that I'm going to read real quick. It says, got impulse control? 
Okay, people who lack self-control can get into all sorts of trouble. Here's how to curb your urges. Alison Zoller's author, Arthur, excuse me, knows better. As the owner of a skin and body wellness center, the 44-year-old Houston resident regularly counsels her clients about the importance of a healthy diet. But too often, she pigs out on fast food, salty snacks, and wine. If I have one glass of wine, I will have more, she says. The voice saying you really shouldn't shuts down, and I can do anything I want to. That voice is the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, an area of the brain that handles planning, making choices, and suppressing urges. It coordinates with another region of the prefrontal cortex called the right orbital frontal cortex, an area involving regulating emotions. When you encounter a potential reward, these areas of the brain do some quick math to determine whether you'll be better off going for it or putting your energy toward a bigger payoff later. Small impulse versus big payoff. Often one is faced with small immediate rewards versus larger delayed rewards. Individuals who choose to wait for larger delayed rewards are typically seen as less impulsive, says Mark N. Potenza, medical doctor, associate professor of psychiatry and child study at Yale University School of Medicine. Impulsivity has two main characteristics, rapid unplanned reactions and reduced concern for the consequences of actions. Clearly, poor impulse control can have all sorts of negative effects on your life, Potenza says. For example, being unable to control your anger can lead to problems at work and with your family. Lack of impulse control can cause compulsive disorders involving such things as gambling, shopping, or sex. It has even been linked to type 2 diabetes. There also seems to be a genetic component to impulse control. A 2008 study suggests that genetic factors influence the size of the right orbital frontal cortex. Teenagers with less volume in this area were more susceptible to alcohol abuse. You can, however, learn to control yourself better, Potenza says. It may be as simple as paying better attention to the voice of your prefrontal cortex. Now, Arthur says, my main trick is just reminding myself as I'm beginning to go down the decision-making road, how I will feel afterward. Developing impulse control. You can improve self-control at any age, according to Potenza. For kids, practice, practice. Learning social skills such as sharing, taking turns, and letting others talk is not only polite, it's an exercise in impulse control. Starting this train early helps build this brain function and instills good habits. For grown-ups, trying to foster good habits in people at an early age is helpful, but it's never too late. People can change, particularly if they are motivated to change, says Potenza. To fight temptation, try substituting a healthier, immediate reward for the less desirable treat you crave. For example, put a dollar into a vacation fund every time you resist the urge to have a drink. If tips don't do the trick, the trick, medications combined with cognitive behavior therapy can reduce compulsive behaviors, including gambling and substance abuse. All right. Excellent. So there is some more information regarding impulse control and impulsivity. So yeah, um, I I do have a lack of impulse control in a certain couple areas. Um, the main one is saying things and interrupting people. Um, like I said, saying things without thinking about it and being aware of the consequences potentially. Uh, sometimes it also is isn't just delay the consequences, but it's the information that I'm presenting in my like out loud that's coming from my mind is not necessarily correct or proper or making sense. But I have a hard time thinking about what I'm going to say and put it in a proper order or in a, a way that makes sense before I say it. Another thing that I have a hard time with, uh, but I have improved greatly, is spending money on things that aren't necessary. I have 
done really well with this. I used to be pretty bad. Um, I would fight myself. Like it wasn't like I would just go and do it and, and not think about the consequences. It would be a very strong impulse, like, or lack of impulse, excuse me. I'd be, I remember a number of times standing uh, in a, in a store or something and seeing an object and getting this like excited high kind of feeling thinking wow this think of what this could do for me think of what what this would be uh, beneficial for and you know trying to convince myself but then I would also be standing there second guessing and going I don't know I you know I don't know if I should do this this is you know think about your budget think about your money what what about whether can you afford it? Is it right? And it, it's it's like it's like that desire had its own had its own brain, right? Like it had this this need for it. Now it does make me wonder, though, if maybe there was a child part involved that maybe took over and was blended with my with my adult part that wanted to make this choice too, because often. You know, it's like this this need for excitement or this need for something new that could be a distraction or could be fun to make life interesting and exciting. So there was, and it was an it was a constant battle. Like there were a lot of times where I would the the adult would win and the impulse control would would be stronger, and I wouldn't do it. I would not buy the item and. I would realize later on that that day or the next day that it was a good choice. Like I didn't really need that thing. It's not a big deal, you know, and then move on. But there are other times where it wouldn't where I wouldn't win over. Like okay, um I guess a good example, uh the computer that I currently use to like help make with this rec- these recordings and then I use it on a daily basis. It's, I guess you could say it was a, an impulse buy and I had another computer. Like I've, I think I've gone through in the 11 years or 12 years that I can think back, I have had four computers and this was my first desktop. And I was thinking like, I need something, I need a monitor, I need something big, I need, I need to have a better like I can I can save space because I what I was doing is I was always buying laptops and the reason for it was that it was it was mobile I could take it to my room I could take it wherever I could take it outside you know I didn't have to it wasn't restricted to one spot but the thing is is as I was getting closer like my my computer was was paid off it was I was getting closer and closer to to this understanding that I had other means of being mobile. I didn't have to have my laptop with me in order to be able to do stuff because I have a tablet that I, I can, and it's way smaller and it's more mobile, more functional. Uh, I, you know, it's, it's much lighter and I can connect uh, headphones to it and I can watch movies and videos and it's a lot easier to function and to use. So, the need for another laptop was not necessary. Plus, I found that having a large screen would be beneficial in a lot of ways because I would have a lot of desk space. I could have the monitor in a small spot on the, on the side and it would be great for watching videos and movies and doing creations and stuff and for photography. So in a way I did, I impulse, in a way I did impulsively purchase the computer and the monitor, but at the same time, I didn't go all out. Like I I wasn't spending money. I got, okay. I didn't buy the most incredible expensive monitor and the, the, the fastest, most powerful computer. I got something that I believed would be efficient, um, a sufficient system as well. And I bought a 27 inch monitor because I'm like, well, it's big, but it's not too big. And it's not like the super high end monitors. So that's, that was to the limits of my impulse control or impulse purchasing. And 
so yeah, to a degree, I definitely have that. But my impulse control problems are more to do with the speaking part, the listening, the like, the con- like that that desire to to pay attention and to give, you know, not not having that that overwhelming feeling of having to say something or having to speak or having to act, like that was that's the stronger thing that is really difficult for me to handle right now. And I've had that issue for such a long time. It was very evident in school and I often struggled with it. And I was, I would get into trouble a lot because I had this urge to speak and to say stuff and I wouldn't necessarily make sense or I would say something out of turn and not just once, but it would be like two, three or four times. And a lot of times I often did say stuff that was to, like to a person instead of controlling it and not saying anything, I would, I would blurt out a, a hurtful word or hurtful line or something, a hurtful phrase. And you, of course, I would regret it later on because it's one of those things where you go, geez, I wish I hadn't said that. That was really stupid of me. And course you'd get in trouble you know being a teenager and facing the consequences I would get in trouble from it and it would also sometimes get me into trouble with my father which if you are obviously listening to my podcast you are well aware of what that would mean and I had to try and learn I was I it, it was a it's a big struggle so The hardest part about it is is stopping yourself and trying to think, trying to come up with a like a an answer, or tell or or convincing yourself or realizing that you don't need to say something, that it's not important, like it's it's not something that has to be said, that you can keep it to yourself, or maybe you can say it to the person uh, privately later on, or give yourself time to properly think about it and bring it out in a correct more manageable more in like more intelligent way of of describing it rather than impulsively speaking it and not necessarily making sense that's the struggle and that's what i have always had a problem with i have definitely improved like my my ability to control myself and control what to say has definitely improved and I think a lot of it does, unfortunately, which is not a good thing, though, is is probably has to do with my complex trauma. I think some of it is is a is more being afraid to speak because you believe that anything that you could say would be harmful to you as an individual. The consequences would not be good. So you, you're better off not saying it. So a lot of that has to that does play in, but there, it's it's been a struggle at times because there have been times where I have said things that I would take back right away if I could, like if 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 I had the ability to go back in time, rewind for ten seconds and stop myself, I would definitely do it in a heartbeat. It's it is hard. It's you might not realize it or you might not understand just how difficult you know having a lack of impulse control can be on someone you think like it's it's so quick and it, and it just happens it's so fast and it and it, it's it's hard to explain like it i'm not a scientist i don't i don't have like technical uh capabilities to explain it to you so that you would go oh yeah I see what you're saying and be able to go "Uh uh-huh yeah and look it up I don't have that that quality or that ability so I can't explain it technically it's just try to try to imagine having you know have you ever played a game where you were on a timer and 
you had to pass something around or you had it was a game where there was a random amount of time you didn't know how much time was left and it could have been 10 seconds it could have been 20 seconds it could have been five two you know it all depends on what the timer chooses and it was either it could be a, a game where the person the who had the device when the time ran out would have something happen to them. Like maybe there would be drink or, or not drink, uh, a food source or a sticky item or something that would get splattered on their face or on their body. Or maybe it was just a game where you would read something or you'd have to like go back and forth. And the person who got the last word in before the timer ran out would get the win or the points, right? And the person who had the device or ha- whose turn it was and the timer would go off before you were able to say it entirely, would, would lose that round. Well, imagine that kind of reaction. You've got the device, and just as you're going to say something, boom, it goes off. And you get splattered in your face, like whipped cream or something, and and it's all over you, and and it's like <gasps> shock, right? Like it's it's a sudden hit, and, and you're surprised, and that intense feeling, and that and that sudden like rush of adrenaline hits, and so it's it's so much like that, and it happens so fast, and it's and it, and you don't have the ability to extend that timer or tell or you know like. To, to spread it out or to go, whoa, and, and in action as you're saying what you're saying to stop yourself or to change the words. Like, you know, like it's like editing the, the audio, you know, you, you say it and then you go, shit, I didn't I didn't mean to say that. Damn it. Damn it. And then having that a magic ability to rewind to the point where you said the wrong thing and to edit and add you don't have that option you can't like it's said it's done and it's so quick and it's so rapid that it's a very difficult thing to to get under control to get a grasp of it takes a lot of work it takes a lot of practice and you and you have to train your mind you have to train your brain to learn how to stop to learn how to think to learn how to can just get in front of it just enough to say okay hold on take a breath figure it out what's the right thing you're going to say or whoa 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 that's that is that is not a right thing to say that's mean that's hurtful that is completely unnecessary you don't need to say that it it's it's that kind of control that your brain you need to train and build in your mind i realize there's a lot of controversy like it could some people think that you can't like it's just there you're just gonna have to deal with it but i believe through hard work and repetition and a lot of training and a lot of self-will and and just hard work i do believe you can change and that you can learn to 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 make it not as obvious to you and not as it's 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 just it's gonna take a lot of work it's gonna take a lot of time and effort and you're going to have a lot of fails. You're going to have a lot of where it just, it can't, but you, you can feel it, right? It's there, but not quite. It's just not enough yet. It's going to take so much effort on your behalf. I'm working on it. I have made improvements. There have been a lot of times where I have stopped myself and I've learned to not let it happen, that you don't need to say it. It's You're better off not doing it. But it's, I'm still struggling and still working on speaking before thinking. And it often causes a lot of frustration and a lot of confusion on both parties. And it is difficult to, it's difficult to change. I wish you could understand how difficult it is to make the change to be less impulsive or to not be impulsive. Okay, especially those, if, if there is, if there are people, excuse me, who are listening to this episode who don't have impulse control problems, it's going to be very difficult for you to understand 
exactly what I'm saying and what I mean. Because if you can't, if you haven't experienced this, you're not really going to be able to know what I'm talking about or understand the sensations and the feelings that you get in the lack of control. And after it happens, just the guilt and the shame that you feel from it. And this is, I see, this is where I think, and I've said in other episodes where the, the trauma plays into this because if you are defending or you're, or you have a child part that's online, sometimes it can be that as well. It, it doesn't always lead to this, but more often than not, those who have ADHD genetically and not because of trauma, the, that impulse control is definitely a brain related function that is not developed properly. Not to say that trauma doesn't do that. Trauma affects the brain development as well. So it's so similar. Like the studies are out there, obviously, that are showing that there are a lot of people out there who have developed ADHD because of their trauma. So it's, yeah, it's going it, to, like I said, anyways, I don't want to get too far off. It's going to take a ton of work. It's going to take a lot of practice. It's going to take a lot of hard times to get it right and a lot of stress, but you can do it. If you just stick to it and you are focused, which I know is hard for ADHD, it can be done. Now, I haven't really talked about the focus yet. Um, focus, I, I, I have had a lot of improvement with focus. I think the medication, like the, the Vyvanse that I've been taking, has probably helped 75%, 80%, I think maybe at the most when it comes to focus. The other additional help that I've noticed that has really, really helped improve my abilities to focus much better is the anxiety medication. That was the, I kind of guess a bit of the surprise. Like when I talked to my doctor, before I started taking it, he did tell me that there was a good chance that the medication for the for the anxiety could help uh, with ADHD related symptoms. He did say that it could help with impulse control, so it's possible. I I don't know for sure yet. I guess I'd re- I'm really gonna have to think about this and work on trying to f- determine that, but. The one thing that the anxiety medication has definitely helped in the time that I've been taking it is the focus and concentration. I have had a great deal of improvement in that area and I notice it. It gets, it's not hard to notice that there has been a great deal of improvement. Day-to-day life, day-to-day um, tasks and step and things that I'm doing like at home, uh, outside, especially with working on, on my garden that I've been working on for the past couple of weeks and like doing things, uh, work wise, I have, I have noticed and really experienced a great deal of, of improvement on my focus. And that's an amazing thing because I have always had in the past a real difficult time focusing and concentrating and it could be on basically anything it wasn't one specific area the the part or the er the one thing that I really noticed where my focus and concentration was really being detrimental to me was in conversations with people and yeah that's it is true like there are times when there are conversations that are occurring that you are not really into like you're kind of like half into it or you're like yeah yeah I don't really want to talk but I will try and it's very easy to obviously get to lose your concentration on what's happening and miss important things that are being said and not retaining a lot of what was told to you but there are a lot of times especially for me where I am having a conversation with somebody and I do want to retain the info. Like it's important. It's really a big deal. It's really interesting and exciting. And I want to hear it all. Like I, I want to get this info and I'm, I'm so looking forward to hearing everything about it. And 
I noticed that it, it really is easy for me to lose the ability to stay focused on it. And it's, it takes nothing for when that happens, it takes nothing for me to, to miss important details. And there have been times when the details are so big that it's an important part or it's the main part of the conversation. And it's amazing how easily you can get distracted by anything. And, and you, and you out there, people with ADHD are totally aware of that where, and something very easy can distract you. It can be a noise. It can be something moving in the background. It could be visual. It could be audio. It could be, there's, there's a number of things that could, could easily pull your mind away and your eyes to wherever it is happening. And then so easily you lose the focus and you can't concentrate on what's happening and you have lost half the conversation or 30% of the conversation and you feel bad and you hesitate to say to the person, I'm sorry, I've, I've missed, I got distracted. I, I don't, I didn't hear what you said because you're afraid of upsetting that person saying and, and making them think that you're not paying attention or that you don't care. So it, it's a struggle. It's on multiple areas of this. So the medication that I'm taking has, it's, like I said, is extremely helpful and it's made things a lot, a lot better. But it's obviously not 100% perfect because there still are times where I have become distracted. But I have found it much easier, though, to pull myself back in and come back and stay and, and refocus my attention to the person that I'm talking to. It's just... You still, it's still hard though. Like I have had times even with the improvements where I have missed stuff. You know, you miss words that have been told to you. And one thing I have learned is I have a better ability to ask again and say, ah, sorry, I missed that. I got distracted. Could you re-say that? And they do it and that's fine. Um, it is frustrating, but... I am feeling better about it because I realize that there is a way of getting around it and improving my ability to focus. I'm happy about it. I'm, I'm glad that it's, it's improved because it's important. You need, in all, asset, all facets of life, you do need the ability to focus and concentrate on what you're doing. Especially if what you're doing is potentially dangerous and extremely harmful to yourself or to the person that who is with you. Can you imagine, and I'm sure you do, uh, those who are who drive a lot and have ADHD, can you imagine how difficult it is to concentrate on the road and keep your eyes focused on what's happening in front of you to avoid other cars, people, signs, changes in the road, in the environment, just how difficult that is, right? Well, I, that is one area that I noticed has had a great deal of improvement. The medication has really made my ability to focus and concentrate and be aware of what is happening on the road. I drive for a living. Like I, I go to multiple locations every day during the week and I face different traffic type of situations, different weather, uh, scenarios come up all the time. And it's you need to be able to have that focus and to maintain the focus on the road in order to avoid potentially fatal car accidents or you know hurting other people or damaging the vehicle especially if it's not your vehicle like if it's a company vehicle you really have to be careful you have to make sure that that company vehicle stays in the same shape that you got it obviously so focus and concentration in driving is extremely important and you need it and having ADHD can definitely be, or sorry, can make that so much harder to do. And I'm quite happy and grateful that I've, I have, I've had this opportunity to 
have the medication and notice the changes that it's done and the improvement that I've had when it comes to driving. I wouldn't necessarily say in the past that I was I am the safest driver. Like I know I make mistakes and I realize that there are things or there were things that I needed to improve on when I'm behind the wheel. But I'm also I do find that I am a I am a relatively safe person. I haven't had a car accident in a very very long time and I am always trying as hard as I can to be wary of the speed limit. Um, I, I'm aware of other people around me. Uh, I'm not the greatest. I wouldn't say I'm perfect, but I am definitely really good at it. And the medication has helped a lot. So I'm, I'm glad that I'm, I'm noticing the improvement in that area, especially that area, considering it's my career. Yeah. Focus is a big, important part of life in, in so many aspects, so many ways. If you can't, if you're not able to focus, you're going to struggle to succeed and get through life because you need that focus in order to be a decent parent. You need that focus to be able to do your job. You need focus to be able to have a good relationship, friendships, um, you need to be able to focus just to do anything really like you can do stuff if if your focus isn't great but you're either going to make a lot of mistakes or you're going to have it's you're not going to do what you're doing or attempting to do very well and you're going to often struggle with the ability to do what you're trying to do properly and efficiently and make it fun it yeah so for those out there who really have a hard time with focusing, I definitely recommend trying to find the real reason for it. If it's definitely ADHD and you are on the medication, see if maybe you need to increase your dosage. See if there are other, if there are other means that you can use to help improve your focus. If you are the type that are that is thinking maybe this is not necessarily related to ADHD directly, but maybe there's something to do with complex trauma that is involved and maybe you're curious about it, you should investigate that because there is a possibility that maybe there's some trauma related, uh, you know, sub issues that are going on in there that you're not aware of. And if you can get that under control or you can heal from that down the road that everything else that's going on will improve a great deal and you'll find that your abil- your inability to focus could be greatly minimized and you'll have a much more successful life and much, and you know you'll you'll feel so much better after so I'd recommend investigating all the angles. Go and look at everything that you can. Talk to the experts. Try to try to think back if you can into your hist- into your past and see what could be there that you're not aware of or that you've forgotten. And that is another episode of Living with ADHD and CPTSD. Well, I hope you enjoyed this particular episode. If you have any comments or questions or maybe a suggestion for my podcast, there are a number of ways to get hold of me. First, you can email me. It's livingwithadhdandcptsd at gmail.com. You can contact me on Twitter. My handle is at ADHDandcptsd. You can also get a hold of me on Mastodon, which is a new social media website that is kind of taking over a little bit for Twitter. If you look up living with ADHD and CPTSD at mastodon.world, then you can find me there, you can follow me, and you can give me a shout and let me know what you think. You can also go to my website, it's www.livingwithadhdandcptsd.ca, and you can also check out my YouTube page, it's at living with ADHD and CPTSD. If you would like to donate to help my cause for my podcast, you can go to ko-fi.com 
That's ko-fi.com slash living with ADHD and CPTSD. You can also go to my Patreon page, Living with ADHD and CPTSD, and become a member where you get special access to all early episodes plus merchandise. You can purchase merchandise to support this podcast. So, go to Patreon. All right, everybody. That's it for today. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.